Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and I actually had a request come in. So I pulled up this old monster. It's the uh, Daiwa 7000C. It's a beautiful reel. It's a three ball bearing reel. This one works pretty good, but uh, I got a request to say how to take it apart and service it. So here we go. We're going to start as we always do by taking off the spool. Well, we don't always do that, but enough. And I got some dirt in here, so we'll clean that up. And I want to remove the handle next. And so get a screwdriver that fits the handle, a nice wide bladed one as opposed to trying to use a small one and stripping out the grooves. And uh, then we're going to take it apart. We'll show you how this reel is made. It's got three ball bearings as we noticed. And uh, this one, uh, it's been fishing for a while and it's going to continue to fish. It's one of my personal favorites. I like using it. And uh, just had a question about how to get the rotor off. So we'll, we'll show you the whole bit while we're at it. Nice. Uh, You'll notice I'm putting all of my pieces and parts into a parts tray and now we'll turn our attention to getting the side plate off. So the side plate has through screw. You can use either a Phillips head or a um, flat bladed screwdriver. I'm going to start with the flat bladed screwdriver to just make sure that the screws get cracked on this. And then I'm going to switch over to a Phillips head because it's generally easier for me. So we'll take the three side plate screws out. And what I like to do when we do the side plate screws is I like to lay them on the table before I put them into the parts tray just to make sure that all of those side plate screws are the same. And I know that uh, those of you that watch the channel probably have heard me do that, uh, say that quite a few times. Uh, nothing wrong with it, but uh, the one time you go and throw them into the tray without looking, sure enough, one of them will be short. In this case, all three of those are the same, so we're going to place those into the parts tray. We'll pull this side plate off and we'll see that it does need to be serviced. We've got some dried grease on there, but this is one of the three ball bearings that's in the side. The uh, other two ball bearings, one is up top on the rotor, the, the other one is behind uh, on the other side plate. So let's go ahead and pull the shaft so we can get at the rest of this then. This is an oldie but a goodie. These reels are around in the 70s and the 80s and a proven design and a great design. So we're going to take the shaft out by removing the screw that goes in the cross wind block. That'll enable us to pull the main gear out. In this case the bearing came with the main gear. And that bearing seems to be kind of frozen on there. And when this happens, we'll get it off. There we go. We got it off. If you find that you're in trouble with that uh, and that it's not coming off freely, uh, it's not one of the, it's not the worst thing in the world to just kind of leave that bearing on there and uh, just work around it. Uh, it's better than trying to jam up a main gear and uh, get yourself in a position where something breaks that you can't replace. So uh, it's not a shortcut. It's nothing to be ashamed of if that's the situation you find yourself in. We got a load of grease here that's not doing anybody any good. So I'm using a cotton swab to just kind of take that off. At one point that grease was probably in the, the teeth of the main gear and uh, through cranking and everything it just wound up behind it or on that shaft. So clean that up. I use uh, cotton swabs. I use paper towels. In this case I'm going to grab a paper towel because I just got some on the desk here. The, uh, the gear that drives the cross wind actually comes off. So you can uh, get to that Pretty easily there. Make sure you do a nice job cleaning it up both sides. You'll notice on the main gear as we're doing this that I have a little shim washer there. That protects the bearing, keeps the, uh, the bearing off of the main gear piece. Make sure that that stays on there. If you weren't paying attention to the way that this cross wind uh, gear goes back on the flat side, accommodates the bearing on this side. Okay, the main gear is kind of cleaned up there. We'll come back and lube that up. I'm going to grab the cross wind block then and we'll do the same thing. A little bit of house cleaning here. Just get all the, the old grease off of that into the tray. Grab this one as well. Get that off. Now, this is not uh, congealed. It's, uh, it's certainly laying there, but it's not in bad shape. I'm just going to hit both of these bearings with a little bit of penetrating oil and let it sit for a moment. Penetrating oil is not a lubricant uh, per se. I mean, yeah, it'll free things up. 
but uh, we'll come back and we'll give that a nice shot of, um, of real oil before we reassemble. And now we're back up to that question that started all of this, how do I get my rotor off? So let's just clean the, the outer grease on that. Kind of looks like a 12 millimeter here, let's see what we got. Yep, maybe 12, just got to find it. Sometimes having a lot of tools on your bench makes it easy, sometimes a little bit more difficult. Got it this time, here we go. All right, so we're going to pull that off then. And then you should just be able to rock your rotor up and off. Now, <laughs> I, I, I think it was Christopher that asked, I told him, I said, don't be afraid to get a hammer. He's having some trouble getting his rotor off. Uh, so what I suggested was sometimes you get a lot of junk in these reels. Just get this down here like it was. Sometimes you get a lot of junk in there and it'll just momentarily seize the reel or the rotor to that shaft. And so what you want to do, not to what you want to do, but if you're in the absolute worst case and you got to do, pull the nut up so that you're clear of the uh, pinion gear, but you have a little space in there underneath. And then it's it, last resort, shock it with a dead blow hammer such as this hold the, the rotor and then just gently tap it and that will generally break the, the junk off. But uh, again, last resort, I don't recommend you just doing that because you're getting lazier, you don't know what, you know what to do next. Here's the bottom of your router, uh, rotor, in this case it's clean, but I do have a little bit of junk sitting in the side, so I'll just use that penetrating oil again to loosen that grease. Do a little bit of house cleaning with that as well. So that's the uh, the rotor assembly, and once we do that, then we've got we're down to the bearing and the. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get this free here. I can. The uh, the bearing and then the collar. So let's take this out as well. We'll do a complete rebuild on this one. This is my personal reel. This is not a customer's reel. I do, as I mentioned, enjoy working and fishing with this one. Some folks that I go fishing with don't enjoy it because it has a loud click, which was typical of the time with the anti-reverse, but uh, you know that's their problem, not mine. I don't mind it. The other thing that they don't like about it is what, it's what I'll call a slam bail. The, uh, there's no bail trip internally on this one. It actually hits against this red button here to uh, make the bail trip. Okay, so again, I'm taking those three screws out because I want to make sure that those three screws are the same. I'm just going to leave them on the table because I'm not going far. And here's another trick. Sometimes these collars are a little bit different. So I'm going to lay this collar that I know goes right there. I'm going to lay that north so that I know the proper orientation. And then we should be able to pull this gear and ball bearing out. Sometimes you need a little bit of leverage. Don't go with a lot of bit of leverage, but sometimes a little bit underneath like that will push this out. So here's your bale assembly then and that's going to enable me to clean up the, the uh, pinion. I said bale, that's the pinion gear assembly. It's going to enable me to clean the dry grease behind there. Again we'll just hit that with some WD-40, let that sit to the side. I'm going to pull off that main gear then and we're going to go in here and just wipe down all that extra grease that's sitting inside those channels. Now because it's sitting inside uh, it's accumulated, doesn't necessarily wipe off easily. Get something like this, it's a, just a pick. Use the edge of a screwdriver. Uh, use a, a paper clip. Use the hook on your fishing hook. Use whatever, but it's not terrible if it's loose grease like this. But uh, if there's dried grease, it certainly will affect the operation of the reel. And you also want to check while you're doing this to make sure that these teeth are not uh, bent or, or damaged in any way, and uh, that's that's pretty good right there. If you really wanted to go crazy, I guess you could put this into an ultrasonic cleaner or something and, and get every last piece of grease off. In this case, uh, I don't see anything that's going to damage 
or uh, affect the wheel at all. So there you go. We got it pretty much cleaned up. You could take a, uh, a bristle brush like this, get that last bit out of there. All right, and we're ready to redo that. You want to make sure that this bearing here is also clean. And you want to make sure that it spins freely, which it does. So we're going to just go ahead and put that bearing back on here. We're going to give it a good drink of oil on both sides of it. Let it just kind of sit while we go back and clean up the rest. So again, I'm leaving this right on the table because it's my intent to reinstall that pretty quickly. I'm going to grab my paper towel then. There's a channel in here that had some grease on it. Let's get that out. I'm going to go grab another series of uh, cotton swabs. Get this junk off the inside of the case. Because dirt is the enemy of a reel and there's no sense taking it this far and not doing the rest of the cleanup associated with it. So let's just get the whole that, that goop out of there. Goop, I guess, is a technical term, right? And I guess if I wanted to, I could remove the cross wind gear as well, but I have no... I'm checking that. The teeth are fine. To me, it's just a general service, unless that real piece is broken there. There's no sense. You don't need to take that out. Just make sure that it's clean and spinning freely, which is what it's doing here. Okay, let's go back to, to start the reassembly then. Whoops, I missed a little bit of junk sitting right there. And a little bit in the back. So there we go. So we're going to take the backside bearing. We're going to put that underneath. Now we hit that earlier with some WD-40. Now I'm going to use real oil. I, in this case it's a synthetic oil, real X. I'm going to give that a good drink of oil there. Just let that sit for a moment. I'm going to come back now and, and reinstall the pinion gear. I'm going to put some grease there, replace the grease that we took off. I'm going to use a, a blue reel grease. It's pen, uh, pen reels grease. It's a uh, precision real grease from Penn. doesn't matter whose manufacturer it is, but make sure you use real grease. Don't use general purpose greases. They're not set up the same way as for fishing reels. Trust the experts in this. If, they, uh, if it's from a fishing reel company, they're trying to give you the stuff that's got the right properties in it. So just uh, be cognizant of that. Again, I took this and I know that the top on this one was going to align with this. Sometimes it doesn't matter. They, uh, they all may be equidistant. Sometimes there's a stagger to them. So I don't even mess around. I just try to remember that if one goes in this particular place, then the rest will follow suit. Uh, sometimes I get a, uh, a little uh, Sharpie marker. I uh, don't have one on my desk at the moment or a pencil. And I actually put the reference mark on it so that I know which side goes to which hole. In this case, it was easy enough just leaving it in the north position on my desk, knowing that uh, that's, that's where I was going to install. And we're just going to put the collar back. In this case, I didn't need to uh, remove that anti-reverse in order to, uh, to get this collar off. If you do, just note before you do that, the orientation on that anti-reverse spring because you may need to uh, reset the two, right? There's one here that sits in this uh, this little hole here and, and underneath the, uh, the override mechanism. And then there's a second one, which the tag end goes underneath here, wraps around the screw, and then there's a little arm here that holds it back that way. So before you do anything else, just turn it, make sure that that's working fine. And again, I think we flooded that, but if I've forgotten, flood that burring again, just to make sure. Oil, you, you don't run into too much trouble uh, worrying about too much oil. Back to this now. We're going to come back and we're going to put a little bit of grease onto the teeth of this. We're also going to put a little bit on the face because we know that we have the crosswind block that's going to ride on that face. That's all. You don't need to overload these wheels with grease. Back to the uh, reinstalling the rotor then. Sometimes you're not going to be able to grab the 
the top of the rotor because there is play in the uh, the main uh, pinion gear. In that case, what you want to do is hold the pinion gear up so that you have enough play here to get this down. And then we can put this back on and tighten that up with that 12 millimeter wrench. And then we want to give it a spin to make sure that it's spinning properly. How's that for confidence? Come back over to the main gear. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to grab some, some blue grease. Now you don't have to get it on every tooth. It looks like that's probably what was done on the last one where we had all of that grease accumulating. If you take care of your reels, if you do your service on your reels about once a year, you don't need to worry too much about uh, the level of grease you have in here. And the reason for that is that uh, doing what I'm doing here and the amounts that I'm using, uh, you're going to be okay uh, for that year. But if you're I was somewhat concerned with that, that that wasn't going to get through there. So I'm going to slip this under. There's a, a little round spot that acts as a, uh, a shim to that back bearing. Uh, it's easier to put it in first and then put the main gear in to seat it like that. Little tricks of the trade. We lost the little shim on the top that I told you to be careful about. So let's go put that back on. I want to go back now and grab that. I want to turn this enough that I can get the tag end down here so that we can put the cross wind block in. I'm going to make sure that we, oh, we got a little bit of dirty grease in there. We want to make sure that we can put new grease into that channel which is going to ride on that stud. And again a little bit onto each arm so that it slides easily. Tuck the one piece under. Now we can go back and reinstall the, the main shaft. We're going to wipe that main shaft down. If you notice that there was any dried grease on there, you can come on here with a um, piece of steel wool. Get the uh, residual off of that. Light, light coating on the shaft. Use your gloved hand. That's a protective latex glove. Use that hand to uh, kind of spread it around there. You don't want to glob too much on. It's only going to get caught here if you glob it. So. No sense wasting all of that uh, grease. And we're going to put the put the uh, tag end in. This is going to line up. Now we're going to get the back end of that uh, set screw. So schematics are available for this. If you get lost. I always recommend pulling the schematic on it. That'll show you the assembly. I have happened to work on these reels. I kind of have a memory for where these pieces and parts go. If you don't, uh, go grab the schematic before you get started just so you can see. And uh, that's going to help you uh, reassemble the reel if you get stuck. I also recommend taking pictures along the way. Now this, I've got a picture going here with the video so uh, I'm in good stead. but. Uh, if you find yourself in a situation where you're afraid that when you open it up you're not going to know what to look for, go ahead and do the, uh, the picture there. I'll put one little more glob of grease here onto the shaft here which is going to ride inside the bearing. And put the side plate cover on now. Grab those three side plate screws which we know are the same so they can go in every hole. So the, so the 7000, the 7000 C competed against the Penn Silver Series, the, the 105. It's the bigger reel of the of the three in the series, uh, and uh, this one was uh, three ball bearing, as you saw. The Penn actually was just the one ball bearing and two bushings. Uh, it's always been a favorite of mine. I I kind of was fishing these in the 70s and the 80s, and uh, you know what, I'm still fishing them today. There's nothing wrong with it other than, like I said, the anti-reverse makes a loud click. But, uh, you know, if you can live with that, uh, and I can, then there's nothing really wrong with it. Okay, sometimes these things get stuck over time. It doesn't hurt again. 
just put a little bit of grease on there, spread it around with your finger. Uh, doesn't serve a purpose, so your purpose there's nothing moving in there. You're tightening it down with these set screws, so there's no real reason to uh, that you have to do it. But with salt water intrusion and dirt and the general abuse that fishing reels take, uh, it doesn't hurt to use it as something that's going to stop it from seizing. All right, I'm going to just start that by hand. This is the side plate screw. <coughs> Back to my wide blade screwdriver to uh, set this. We'll give it a, uh, a turn here just to make sure everything's fine. Of course it's fine. Okay, we, uh, you don't need to, but I do. Put some oil onto the throws on both. Well, this one's a dead end on this side. And up top here, even though that's not a, a line bearing, it's not a line roller. And this is what I mean by the, the slam mechanism. That arm is, this arm here is actually going to slam to close this. And then one more service that's always good to do is to come up top here and do the drag service. So let's go ahead and do that. This has a uh, clip in it that's holding the holding the drags in. It's a spring clip. So note the word spring, and uh, make sure that you uh, just hold yourself while you're doing that. In this case, we got some flexible washers in here. I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to make sure that this channel is clean, and you can see that there's some accumulated. Uh, dirt in there, which is not uncommon for a top drag reel. You want to make sure that uh, you get those channels out of there because dirt will affect the operation of a drag. In this case, is a good a good amount of it, probably sand or dried uh, salt water or any of the above. You want to make sure you can get that out to the extent that uh, it is possible. Get a nice clean channel in there. This is a flexible washer. This could do with some uh, dry grease. I'm going to go ahead and use some Cal's Universal Dry Grease on that. Just a little bit. And again, I'm going to spread that down with my gloved hand. We have a metal washer. You just want to make sure that that's nice and clean. Next one up is actually a hard washer. So that's doesn't require anything. It's like a Teflon washer. Next one up would be your eared washer. And we have another hard washer. And we have that top washer. Once you do that, you can grab the clip again, set it in the groove. Make sure that that clip is in all sides. And again, be careful. Hold that so that it doesn't uh, spring out on you. Okay, with that done then, go reset the Spool onto the shaft, tighten down the drag. The drag adjuster knob there should tighten down. Test it. Yep, we're tight. All right, we're good. So there you go. Now that's the noise that my fishing buddies don't like. It kind of tells them I got a fish on the line and they don't. So uh, I guess that's they a little warning, right? Uh, but at any rate, that's the Daiwa 7000C. It's a beautiful uh, example of a 1970s, 1980s reel. It's three ball bearings. It'll compete with anything that's on the market today. I guess the only thing that uh, the market today has against it is that uh, it has those silent anti-reverses from the uh, anti-reverse bearing up top as opposed to the, uh, the anti-reverse dock. But other than that, I uh, love this reel, and I'm going to continue to fish it. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please like it and subscribe. Uh, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.